My name is Gail Price and I've got the best job in the world. I've been a scientific glass blower for nearly 17 years and I'm currently working in the chemistry department at the University of Leicester. Glass is brilliant, it really is. I'm not just saying that because I'm a glass blower. It's an incredibly versatile material and it's one of those things, it's, it's so common, we don't see it. Um, and from an artistic point of view, it's almost as though whenever you make something in glass, you're not actually sculpting with the material, it's like you're sculpting with light. There used to be a lot more glass blowers in universities than there are these days. I do think glass blowing could do with a revival that can't be allowed to die out. This is a large coil condenser, and this is what I'm going to be making for you today. After this comes in metre and a half lengths, I'm going to coil it around this mandrel to turn that length into about that sort of length. Before I start the job, um, they're not regular sunglasses. Uh, that coating on there is a thing called didymium. And what that does is it filters out the sodium glare so you don't end up with that boiled eyeball feeling at the end of the day. It's amazing the amount of people that are surprised um, whenever they come in and they go, oh wow, I didn't even know you were here. Gosh, this is amazing, can I have one of these? Can you make me one of these? It's nice, it's that kind of sense of wonder. So it was actually the Romans that were responsible for making transparent glass um, because they felt it made it easier to appreciate the colour and the quality of their wine. Let's see if that fits. That sounds bad, but actually, that's pretty good. If all that preparation pays off, I'm going to do three different joins on the end of this. I'm going to join the outside to the inside, so it's a little bit tricky. Fingers crossed. Laboratory glassware needs to be tough. It needs to be resistant to thermal shock. It needs to be resistant to chemical attack. We tend to use borosilica glass, or you probably know it's Pyrex. You know, you'll have a dish in your kitchen or a jug or something. What you don't want to do is get the get the glass too hot. It can boil. So really, you you judge it by colour. You judge it by movement. So you'll have heard of Murano glass, it's some of the, the finest quality glassware in the world. Back sort of in medieval Venice, in a city made of wood, having so many unregulated glass blowers with so much fire and so many furnaces was just a recipe for disaster. So they exiled them all to Glassmakers Island and it was actually the best thing they could have done because it allowed for a really free and open exchange of ideas. I'm going to rejoin this and then just blast this. So you might have heard the old wives' tale about how glass is definitely a liquid because old church windows are thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. The process of making the glass back when these things were made was very primitive. You couldn't get a uniform thickness for the glass. To make the window more stable, that thicker glass would be put at the bottom of the window and they put the thinner stuff higher up. So there's quite a lot of glass blowing terms have actually entered the English language. Hiram Codd invented the very first marble stoppered bottle, which the locals loved because they could store their local brew in it, which they christened wallop. And therefore what was in the bottles was a load of Codd's wallop. Back in with a hand charge. This will literally be the last bit I found for Full House. 